Well, welcome back to the channel there, Papa's Posse. Once again, it's time for Papa's Comic Books, coffee, and more. Okay, before we begin, don't forget about that QR code right there. It'll take you to my YouTube, my eBay, and my Instagram page. All the social media you'll ever need. Okay, let's get to this one. Here we go. It is V. The visitors are your friends. Humans don't even think it. This book is number two, 75 cents from March of 85. It's by Carrie Bates and Carmine Infantino. Title of the story is The Town with No Shame. Now, before we begin, don't forget this book and others are available on my eBay page, papas-comic-books. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about it. Okay, let's get into it. V. It could be worse, you know. If our stabilization coil had gone on the blink a hundred miles sooner, we'd be stranded in your arid death valley now. A resistance-owned starfighter. Skyfighter downed and disabled after a forced crash landing across a desolate stretch of California terrain. The expression is on the blink, Willie, but you're right. At least we landed on the outskirts of a small town. Now, if someone could only explain why the people who came out to greet us are behaving so strangely. First, they're carrying crates like they're going to offer them to us as presents. Then, when they get a look at us, they drop everything, turn tail, and run. Donovan, it just doesn't figure. Makes you wonder what exactly is in those crates. From deep space, they descended upon the planet Earth. These legions of lizard aliens in human disguise, posing as man's intergalactic allies. It was only after later that they visited us true insidious Motives and savage instincts became known to the daring few men and women who started the undaunted resistance. The tight-knit fighting force that has become mankind's last line of defense, the last hope of survival. The town with no shame. You know what gives me bad feelings in my gut about this? All they saw was a visitor sky fighter going down outside their little town limits. There was no way they could have guessed there were resistance fighters on board. You've lost me, Mike. What's the bottom line here? The bottom line is that whatever is in those crates, they were meant for lizards, not us. Careful, Julie. They could be some sort of booby trap, maybe bombs with time delay fuses. I don't think so. Not unless these bombs breathe on, on the side. If you put your ear close enough, you can hear things scurrying around in here. Well, do I have to play 20 questions here? I don't believe it. Field mice. Donovan, this crate is full of field mice. What do you know? This one too. Same here. But I don't get it. Why would these local yokels try to pass off some pet mice to the lizards? The aliens look on small mammals as pets, Hart. Between meal snacks would be more like it. There's nothing visitors savor more than gulping down a few live prey. Sorry, we didn't save our save one for you, Willie. That's all right, Mike. I'm trying to cut down. But there is something else you should be concerned about. If these humans came forth with offerings of food, does that mean they consider the visitors the friends? At that moment, in an exclusive marina north of Redondo Beach, I don't know who you crackers are or where you came from, but if I had a guess, I'd say you're undercover vice. Well, what do you know, Ham? With all the boats out here for the taking, we had to pick the drug runner model. model. I told you, Chris, we're just having one of the bad days. Yeah, well, maybe I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it anymore. Oof. He's kicked. If I didn't have a bum shoulder, pal, this would hurt you a hell of a lot more. 
you dead meat sucker. And you're a hamburger, pal. You notice how the quality of low life seems to be declining these days? They can't even get me breathing hard anymore. It's those damn lizards, Ham. You're more accustomed to fighting cold-blooded scum now. Speaking of which, we want to be long gone by the time the, vic the visitor squad circles back. It's time we headed out to sea. I hear Catalina's great for Marlin this time of year. Catalina? Right. The mothership, the Orbitus Colossus, that serves the headquarters of the home base, was the vast visitor army. And yet, there is not a lizard alive who wants to stay alive, that is, who cannot help but cower from the cold-blooded chill in the voice of the do domineering commander, the voluptuous but venomous Diana. And, so you see, Diana, there was no way we could have headed off the resistance attack on work farm G7 with such depleted forces. And, silence! I do not believe what I am hearing. You pathetic excuses for soldiers have been among the humans for so long. You have been learned to grovel like them. I told them, Diana, I told them to fight with the savage fury that is inbred in the fiber of our beings. But their youth, their inexperience, they were simply no match for the resistance fighters. Paltry excuses. I will not tolerate excuses. The defeat we suffered at the work farm, G7, is inexcusable. The damage to our cause, irreversible. Therefore, strict discipline is required here. Do you not concur, Captain? Without question, Diana. After these sorry rookies see one of their own reduced to a smoldering pile of bud waste, perhaps next time they will serve our glorious cause with spirit worthy of seasoned warriors. I couldn't agree more, Captain which is why I've selected you to set the example for your youthful squadron. Uh, I do not understand. True, all of you failed in your mission, but as Captain Lever said, your youth and inexperience were crucial factors in the defeat. Captain Lavar, however, was a seasoned officer who could lay no such claim. He should have anticipated a probable existence attack and requested reinforcements in advance, which brings me to you, young Devon. Yes, Diana, I hereby appoint you the new captain of the squadron. I do trust you to intend to succeed where the predecessor failed. Yes, Diana, oh yes, thousands of miles far below. With any luck, really, we should be able to find every spare part on your list in the auto shop of the local gas station. Fortunately, the repairs will, we require are restricted to just a few crude components, not unlike those found in your average combustion engine. Willie and Boyce are going to stay with the Starfighter. Hart, you get to tag along with Miss Parrish and me. We're heading into town to make contact with the locals. Don't worry, guys. If things get too dicey down there, we can always ask Scotty to beam us up. Not funny, Hart. I have a feeling whatever's ahead of us will be anything but a laughing matter. Brother, this is still planet Earth, right? You were right, Julie. I'm not laughing. Geez, now I know how outpatients from the leper colony feel. I don't get it, man. Or woman, young or old. They're all treating us as if we were the Manson family. When they thought they were visitors, we got the royal welcome. And now this. Something's wrong here, Mike. Wrong in a major way. Good day to you, sir. My friends and I, we've got some trouble. Engine trouble. We'd be obliged if you could point us to the nearest gas station. Where I'll point is over your shoulder, Ace, because that's where your three are headed. Right back out of town, the way you came. Your kind isn't welcome here in Sparkle Springs. You don't say. Oh, yeah, I do say. You want to leave town on your own? Two legs or a stretcher? Wait a minute. If this is a couple, a multiple choice, aren't I entitled to three suggestions? City boy, I was hoping you'd say something like that. Your turn. Boom. Now, my turn. And my turn again. Oh, nice moves. You had enough, Tiny? Wow, nobody in this town ever decked Big Bob before. My friends and I are from out of town. Uh, Billy. Billy Lee. 
Glad to meet you, Billy. I'm Mike, and over there is Miss Parrish and Mr. Hart. Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys are the first decent visitors to come through Sparkling Springs ever since I can remember. Does that mean you've been getting visitors that aren't so decent, Billy? Oh, I don't pay any attention to me. Mom says I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. There isn't much to see around here, but what there is, I'll show you. Better. Whatever scam these dudes were into, they played for keeps. We got us a regular arsenal down here. You're not going to freaking believe what we've got down here in the hole, partner. Something blonde and tanned in a bikini, I hope. M16s, grenades, 357 hollow points. Buddy, you don't know just how glad I am to hear that. Because of a quartet of those flying scum suckers is, is hot on our aft. How the blazes did they draw a beat on us out here 20 miles from shore? I'll get back to you on that. Deal one thing we've got in our favor. Surprise. There's no way these lizards could know they're about to get a couple of us demonstrations of skeet shooting. rat a tat tat E, And they get to be skeet. Watch it, Chris. There's one fly eater who just doesn't know how to take a hint. Yeah, well, I think we just got my general drift. And the other two got the message. They're heading for the nearest cloud cover with their tails between their legs. Next time, Cracker, you get to do the driving and I get to do the shooting. Ahmad DeLorne, they negated two of our number, two of our number, but we are firmly locked on their position. Yes, Ahmad, I'm picking it up on my receptors now. Follow at safe distance until I reach the perimeter. Then we shall converge on our troublesome prey. Sparkling Springs. Of course I knew I'd heard that name somewhere before. Your town is famous for the natural spring water that comes up from these geysers. I remember my dad buying bottles of this stuff when I was your age. Phew, you must be old, because Mom says they shut down the old bottling plant since I, before I was born. I can still remember the slogan on the labels. Sparkling spring, water liquid heaven in a bottle. Yuck, no wonder they went out of business. Soon, like, well, it's about time while well, you were sightseeing, Hart, and I came across some very interesting facts about Sparkling Springs, like, like the fact that the local hospital is empty, even though the average age of the people here are over 60. You know the statistical improbability of an entire town filled with Social Security age people in perfect health? That is one of the Ripley's, believe it or not. What else? You can't say we don't. We didn't try to get you to leave, city boy. Oh, yeah, over here next. Check out the ground. This entire area is barren, devoid of topsoil. But inside the town limits, the soil inexplicably becomes richer and more fertile than any equatorial rainforest. Uh-oh. I was afraid they'd get around to this sooner or later. You back away from them, Billy. You're one of us. You got nothing to do with them. I'm really sorry about this, Mike. They mean well. They really do. You could have fooled me. You can't say that. We didn't try to get you to leave, city boy. We know you are. We know who you are and what you fight for. And that's why we are making you our prisoners. It's for your own good and ours. Are you razzing me, Ham? You really think the lizard laser that per perforated my arm left some kind of tracer in the wound? Figure it out for yourself, buddy. How else do you explain that way they've been able to home in on us no matter where or how far we go? Damn, you're right. That's got to be the answer. I guess it's too late for, to amputate, huh? Very well. Now that we've joined forces, there's no reason for further delay. Let the attack commence. Well, look. What just come down out of the clouds? Three lizards on a flying platter. Chris, check out the toad who's riding the point. Isn't he? He sure as hell is. He's the one in charge of the squad that almost fried our tails back at the club Creole. This time he's taking the overkill approach. And that flying sardine tin of theirs can deliver the firepower to do it. Call me finicky, but I'm just not in the mood to donate 
ashes for the cremation at sea. I second that motion. They're coming around for another pass, another direct hit, like the last one. And this tub is, go is going, going, gone. That's why you and me are ducking below, Ham. I got a sweet idea on how we might rig a surprise for the visitors and let them think they have us right where they want them. If I'm reading you right, we're going to have to hustle. No, you don't understand. You see, for us to collect the bulk of the sizable fee from our employer, I don't understand, Lauren. Why not simply sink the vessel with the two humans aboard? We must bring back the corpse of the human called Tyler. His companion you may obliterate with total abandon. Thank you, Lauren. They must have fled down here below. What's all that? No wonder they were able to fend off our first attack so easily. There's a ver veritable arsenal down here. I'm familiar with most of these samples of human ve weaponry, but I must confess the purpose of this one baffles me. A ticking timepiece embedded in what looks like a wad of putty? Uh, a ticking timepiece, a wad of putty? Imbeciles. I've recruited imbeciles. Lorne, what is something you said? Why is it jetting to the top deck? Ba-boom! At that very moment, 30 yards away underwater, as my hero on TV likes to say, I love it when a plan comes together. I think you and the sheriff owe us an explanation, Mr. Mayor. We've done nothing to merit being thrown behind bars. We know that, and you know that. Actually, Mr. Parrish, you're not in our jail for what you have done. Trust us, young lady. It's, it's as much for your protection as ours. I knew it. You people have some sort of, on, on, of ongoing deal with the aliens. That explains the live snacks you brought out to the Sky Fighter, gifts for you, for who you thought were lizards, but rather what you could do to come tomorrow morning when the visitors make their next regular stop here. But why now? But why? How? How could any community of decent people do business with invaders dedicated to the extinction of mankind? Do not be too swift to judge us, Miss Parrish, not until you hear the full story. It was nearly a year ago when the visitors first descended upon Sparkling Springs. And naturally, we were all in fear of our lives, expecting the worst. But then, lizards, we soon found out, they were chock full of surprises. For starters, they let us know right off they meant us no harm. Quite the contrary, they informed us their intentions regarding us were, to, were, not, were not only peaceable, but downright charitable. For example, they brought down these weird crystals from the mothership and seeded them all over the worthless sun-baked ground of our feet. And wouldn't you know it, in a matter of days, we were growing giant vegetables the size of basketballs. For the first time in generations, the people of Sparkling Springs were able to grow their own food again. But that was just the beginning. As you might have noticed, most of us here are getting on in years. And like a lot of people in their 60s and 70s, there were those of us sick and ailing in the hospital. But not for long, not after the visitors started bringing down their space medicine. In no time at all, there wasn't one of us who wasn't feeling flushed and clit chipper again, and if the clock had been turned back, for all of us, a good 20 years. And for all that, all the visitors asked in return was permission to siphon up the spring water from our geysers once a week without interference. They confided in us that there certain minerals responsible for the crystal purity of the water had some sort of, some sort of minigator, I can't read that word, minigrating effect on their cold-blooded bodies. Well, we didn't have to think or on their proposition too long. Considering they could have just as easily staked the geysers by, by force and leveled our town to the ground, under the circumstances we felt we made the only sensible decision. They get what they want, our mineral water, and we get health and prosperity like we've never known before. And just where does that rest of mankind figure into this equation? The hundreds of innocent victims who have already died fighting for their freedom against the visitors. Or worse yet, all those thousands who have been abducted and frozen for future use by the lizard food. What about all of them? 
We didn't expect you to understand, which is why you'll remain locked away in here while the visitors make their next regular stop in the morning. After they've left, we'll hold a town meeting and decide how to proceed from there. Soon. You know, sooner or later, they're going to figure out that they can never let us leave, or at least not alive. I'm afraid Hart's got a point, Mike. They know we'd come back and seal off these geysers, and that would mean the end of their sweet deal with the lizards. Right? No more giant tomatoes at the diner table, or perfect checkups at the doctor. With stakes that high, what are three lives worth, right? It's like they're all in days there, brainwashed or something, in a way I suppose they have been. By now the visitors have become masters of this we are your friends routine. With susceptible subjects like these, senior citizens, they know just the right buttons to push. Psst. Hey, Mike. Billy, are we glad to see you. I'm sorry, Mike. I guess I should have given you guys the real lowdown about what goes on here, but Mom made me promise. Billy, don't worry about it. But you can be a big help to us now. Go out to our Skyrock Skyfighter. There you'll find two friends of ours, Willie and Boyce. Give them the lowdown and tell them where we are. They'll know what to do. You got it, Mike. Hurry, Billy, and be careful. Several minutes and a mile later, on the outskirts of the north end of town. Oh, blast. You've blown it, Billy. Lee, you've blown it. Doc Burgess, Mr. Trotter, Mr. Sims, half the grown-ups in town are already out here. They're covering up the sky fight and making sure the visitors won't see it from the air tomorrow. But where are Mike's friends, William Boyce? Crisis code 788H. This is Lauren. Repeat, this is Lauren. Lauren calling Nathan Bates. Damn it, respond, Bates. You told me you'd always be accessible on this frequency. Bates here. This pulled me out of a meeting, Lauren. I do hope you're about to tell me what, I, what you know and what I want to hear. Tyler, he escaped, wiped out my entire squad, nearly killed me. I was barely able to crash land on this shoreline. What? You had him, had him outnumbered, and you let him escape? I need assistance. Give you my coordinates and send a few of your men. Meantime, Lauren, you and your squad of lizard defectors were totally on your own. That was our deal. I can't risk being imp implicated in the Ham Tyler manhunt in any way. You know that. If Diana found out I was financing your defection shed, quietly, literally kill me. In a most excruciating manner, no doubt. Well, well, well. Get a load of what washed up on the beach, Ham. Told you this one got away from the explosion in time. Lauren, is it? Guess what, Lauren? You're about to... Make my day. Not even a low-flying eagle could stop this dad bling rocket ship now, could spot it. Reckon you're right. What do you say we head back to town? It's getting to the mid it's getting it's getting a mite chilly out here tonight. Psst. Pubercet and human. Huh? Keep your voice down. We're back here in the bushes. What are you doing out here, kid? You must be boys and Willie. That's us. We were able to abandon our vessel and conceal ourselves just before your fellow townspeople arrived on the scene. Do you have any idea why they were so determined to camouflage our ship? Sure, it's so the visitors won't spot it tomorrow when they... For fellow humans are su suddenly scrambling to cover. You got that right, Willie. Something has sure got them spooked. Follow standard procedure. Lock us into hover mode directly over the springs. Thanks to our early arrival, perhaps we can have the three, the tiresome siphonous procedure completed by sunrise. Very good, Captain Devon. Diana will be impressed by your efficiency. Yes, I certainly hope she will. It's the first time they've ever happened, honestly. All the other times they never showed up before morning. Now it's too late. Too late for anyone to rescue Mike and Julie. Who can save Mike and Julie? Will the town survive the coming battle? Come back in one month for the next exciting conclusion of V. Oh, no. Well, that was V. 
The Town with No Shame, number two from 1985. I hope you enjoyed this book. Now, don't forget this book and others are available on my eBay page, Papas-Comic-Books. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button down below and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about it, okay? All righty. And as Papa and Mike always say, that was easy. Until next time, Papa is out.